Yeah. What would you say, 86? I said, what, 91? The price is right, you would lose. Well, this is a hot knife. I got this through uh, l &H branding. It's what we use to take our net wrap off the uh, bail processor. We try to take the net wrap off every, oh, eight to 10 bales. It just comes off easier, less to cut through. More often we cut the net wrap off, uh, the better the machine is at grabbing the net wrap so it doesn't end up in the straw or the manure. There you can see the channel. That's what the uh, knife usually runs through. And so if Jack runs the hot knife right along that channel, it cuts pretty nice. We gotta put new knives on this thing for next year. These blades, I should say. They're kinda getting a little rounded off. So that's probably the project for next year. We're towards the tail end, just bedding trout. This thing is all we do now. Probably bed five, six bales a week of straw, so nothing major for this thing to roll through. Does a good enough job with these blades to get that spread evenly. But yeah, we used to use a, uh, the big knife that runs in this channel here is kind of dull and bulky and it really doesn't do a good job. You're sitting there sawing forever. So then I started using a uh, carpet knife, you know, box blade knife. And that's nice, but you'd go through a blade or two, hacking through all this stuff. And then after that, I said, well, I found this hot knife, LNH branding out of Mandan, North Dakota. And uh, it makes this job a two, three minute job now, which is pretty slick. And then you just kind of unwind it. Like I said, if you stay ahead of it and you don't do 15, 20 bales through the machine, uh, you're grabbing more net wrap and easier to take off when the time comes. And just kind of yank it off some of these uh, blades and then from there it just kind of unrolls itself. Two guys, it always goes a little faster. You can get both sides at the same time. And just like that, we're done. Now we'll just roll it around a little bit, take some of the fines off these blades where I got caught at. It's kind of nice we got the wind at our back here today, so it blows a lot of the uh, dust that gets caught within the net wrap out of our face. This can be a pretty dusty mess with all the straw dust caught in there. Just to come back around one more time. Right there. Got it. So we like to get it all cleaned off the best we can. Helps your blades be a little more free. Get all your stuff off it. Doesn't end up in the straw in the manure pile. You haven't seen that little dwarf calf lately. Uh, you probably know what happened there um, just didn't make it you might only had a 300 pound calf he, he belonged to Ripley's believe it or not more than anything so uh, yeah he did not make it so the other calf we saw in a video was BB and uh, on Friday the 8th uh, he actually went to a new home and I'm pretty excited about that home he got a uh, a couple kids and a rancher uh, to the west of us uh, bottom from my buddy uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited. He's going to have a uh, company. It's more company than he had in this barn. Obviously, he was on a solo here. So he's got uh, two little kids to help take care of him and feed him and play with him. And, uh, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll find maybe a new mom there even because they're starting their calving season. So if he needs a, a spiker calf, he can throw a calf on there. So And then since BB's gone, obviously his mother never wanted him. And so she's going to go down the road. Definitely not a uh, definitely not a good cow. We, uh, we got a new project here now. And Jack's big 4003, one of his best cows here, had twin bull calves. That's exciting, right? Well, the problem is, is this little calf here, I believe it's this one. I haven't put their tags in yet. It's this one, judging by, it's uh, kind of just the way it's sitting here. Uh, he can't get up. His limbs are a little loosey-goosey. I've been feeding him via tube uh, because he won't even get up to try to eat. I can stand him up, but that's about it. So I'll show you here quickly kind of what this looks like. We're gonna get these guys eating. And I'm gonna try something new today to see if I can get them to stand 
and eat. She likes both her calves. That's all good. But for some reason, he just don't want to <clears throat> kind of balance himself out. So if I can get him to stand and eat, that's a lot better than me having to tube him. Oh, that's exciting. This is huge. He's, you can kind of see in his legs. He doesn't really want to, it's kind of wobbly and not really all there. This is brand new to me. Honestly, you guys, this is, uh, I haven't seen this calf even be able to stand, let alone walk. Usually that's what he would do. Once he starts to wobble like that, he would flop right over. And you can just see, normally cows get up and do their business. He's only been able to lay down, so his back end's kind of getting a little tough. So we, we, I've been cleaning that off morning and night. This is exciting. He might be able to uh, get on the bag by himself here. I'm going to see if mom will let me um, do this. But I was going to actually show you guys how docile this cow was in regards to I was putting the feed in front of her, and then while the brother would nurse on one side i would hide directly behind the cow kind of dumb but she is a she is a docile cow and i would just milk out her back quarters to get him a full three and a half pints to get him to eat so i don't know if we'll have to do that here this morning i'm going to uh see if we can get him on the bag here and working right away this is that good fourth cutting we've been feeding grass alfalfa mix she sure loves it they all do this is like candy for these cows but this keeps her standing in one place for me well, uh, I work with this calf. I'm gonna put it up here for her. No, buddy, she's standing so nice for us right now. There we go. See how this works. Here, here. There you go. Quite a few good gulps in and drinks in. I'm sure he's got about a half of one of those tubers in him. I know that. And he's building strength. He's figuring stuff out. Heck, he's just finally starting to stand. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt here. About 96 hours in here now, and they both eat like champs. Super aggressive. Uh, great bag on the cow. They're hitting both sides. No hiccups at all. She stands for him great. And this is the type of cow here that's going to be able to carry these two calves with no problem at all. But each quarter, honestly, when she first was milking, dropping milk, there was almost three pints in each quarter. I mean, it's phenomenal bag on this big old cow. I'm going to kick them in the midway here. And they can have the center of the barn. Absolutely beautiful day here yesterday. March 11th, 24 will be a day I'll never forget. We had 70 degrees. Um, so yeah, we have <laughs> nothing behind the lot here. They got these twins in the barn here. You see the little one on the inside left there. He's eating great. Um, I'm gonna give them the midway here. We got the front open and the back open, letting fresh air roll through this barn. And then back here, all I have left is my set of twins. Very grateful for the weather this year, that's for sure. I told Jack as soon as these two cows calve out, we're done using the barn for a bit until it's supposed to get cold here coming into the weekend. Highs in the low 40s, upper 30s, and then uh, gonna have gonna have some cool nights down to the upper teens, low 20s. So might need to start using the barn again, but if you can get a break through that building, um, you know, just having uh, some air go through it, not cows adding to the manure every morning and night that's kind of nice makes chores easy too i mean chores have been an absolute breeze out here with the 40 pair in the west lot we did open up the uh full lot so we took down those panels so now they have this nice full about eight acre grass patch out here that they can all roam around in as you can see the calves really like laying down in that grass this was all harrowed before we put them out here so it's nice and fluffy and clean and Cow's bale feeders got moved back. I said, we're, we're super slow right now. Um, I had one calf in 48 hours. Uh, it's it's kind of just the nicest weather, of course. Why would we have any calves, right? We'll wait till it gets cold again and 15 degrees at night and we'll have four calves born and nip their ears and stupid stuff like that. So, 
So the con to having these twins on this cow could potentially be the fact that uh, she breeds back late or not at all. Um, or she could stay on schedule. It's a good cow, good, good oven. She might be just fine. She's got a great bag on her. Um, you don't know. The pro, on the other hand, is say you have two 600-pound calves she weans off in October. Um, that's, in the current market, that's about $3,400 worth of calves. Um, and then say the cow has to go too, sadly, say something happens there, she doesn't breed back or extremely late. Um, you're looking at another, you know, with a big framey cow like that, uh, probably another 1800 bucks. So 1800 for the cow and 30, you know, $400 for the set of calves. Um, you know, not a bad, uh, ROI on a raised animal, um, over a nine year calving period for her and a 10 year old cow. At least she's a big cow and she's done her job on the farm. Um, and you're in a hot market, so that's a pretty decent way to go out with a good, good old cow like that. We are uh, finally picking things back up around here. I had two cows have calves earlier, one a bred heifer and a uh, 2015 model cow. And we got another bred heifer trying here. She's been working on this one for a while, uh, about an hour and change now since uh, she started pushing. Um, She's really been giving her all. Kind of feel. Tongue is starting to get a little swollen. It makes me nervous. She's pushing. You got it, girl. Again, I don't like... Uh, intervening too early with these heifers um, kind of let them kind of got to let them uh, figure it out on their own but there's a limit of when you should jump in I'm gonna try to do a little something here as long as she's laying down there Okay. I'm gonna let this hang like this. It'll actually help get fluids out of this calf. There we go. Wow. Not a small calf, mama. Bull calf. Holy crap. Yeah, I don't think she's gonna have that on her own. This is a decent pull. We'll bring him up there on that higher ground and get him uh, some of that nice cleaner drier sand. You got like a thoroughbred here, girl. It's a big gap. That was not a small calf. I don't know if you would have had that bull calf on your own or not, girl. Glad we didn't have to run through, through the barn and do all that fun stuff. I dined that navel right away. He's up on some higher, drier gravel here, so sunshine's starting to peek through. It's about 50 some odd degrees. Wow. I think uh, Jackie could be right. That might be an AI calf. But extremely late here. In theory, we should have been done with the AI calves about a week ago. But I know what my herd bull that I've used for the last, this will be his fourth calf crop for us. What his calves come out, what they look like. Um, this is definitely a monster calf for a first calf heifer. I'd say all of 90 plus pounds. 
she's a bigger framed heifer, obviously. She had no problem having this calf. I'd say he's north of 90 pounds, but uh, there's no way she was gonna have that on her own. Now, it's not like I needed a calf puller or a C-section or nothing. We just went out there with this and got it out, but I'm just glad I had kind of the downhill slope over there going for me, because she, uh, she definitely needed help on that one, that's for sure. Now that was about an hour, I would say hour and a half since she started and about an hour since her bag had popped. To give these heifers time, otherwise it seems like you kind of spoil them and they think that uh, if they got to work a little bit in the future, it just they'll get pulled where you want to let these cows kind of figure it out on their own. I've had three calves born all within the last two hours. Okay, show this is uh, tear it out, zeros. We're going to weigh this bull calf, so come with me, Jack. Let's see what this calf weighs here right away. He's fresher and fresh. Oh, he's even sitting up for me to get this bass under him. What do you think he weighs, Jack? What's your guess? I'd say 86. I'm going to go with 92 pounds. Uh, you got your deals covering it. Yeah, got to get underneath him here. It's the one thing with the basket. Got to make sure you're... Let's say 75.26. No, he's not. Is that pounds? 75.26. Is that pounds? 75.26. <laughs> he seems way bigger than that. It looked like I'm a fool for that number, don't I? Boy, he felt like I was pulling out a freight train. 75 points. I got to see that to believe it. It showed you right on here. I know, but I want to see it with my own eyes. Oh, oh buddy. Uh, 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 some help, but I'm getting ready to stand up. He's gonna want to stand up. Uh, we'll get him up. Uh, Eat that navel braid. Okay. Uh, What's that say? Now it says 95 points. That's what it says. Look at the ground. Show it on the ground. What? Show he's off the ground. He's off the ground. 94.7. You're getting 75.26. I think something happened. That's what I thought. Mabel's way back here. Really get that thing sprayed. Hey, soak it. So it's almost laying in a puddle. So 94.77 pounds. What would you say, 86? I said what, 91? The price is right, you would lose. Well, she's a good mom. He's trying to get up now. He's iodined really well. I'd be willing to bet that's a uh, AI calf out of the Iron Horse Bowl. From select sires, he's pretty big. Okay, so we're about seven days past. Uh, we're about seven days past our end of our AI date in, 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 in a sense. But being he's this big, 94 pounds out of a first calf heifer, he doesn't follow suit at all with the heifer bowl we've been using the last three years. Be his fourth crop for us this year. So I've seen three years of logic calves on the ground, and we've already had a couple, and this doesn't match any of those calves that we've had. This is a thick head, long bodied, big frame bull calf out of a first calf heifer weighing in at 94.77 pounds. Uh, that's not a, uh, that's not a logic calf. That one sat in the oven a little long, I'd like to th think. <laughs> what do you think? Told you that. Well, we got 6229, this is the first set of twins I've been working with. These boys figured out how to use her left hand side and they got that rear low quarter, the old sweet chariots. But uh, this side, they're just on that front one yet. They really got to figure out how to get down there to get that bottom one. It's just a matter of time. So that's good. I didn't have to assist her with anything, or them, I should say, with anything. They kind of figured that out on their own uh, within a week. So now I'm just kind of waiting for uh, them to figure out the next one. This guy here, he's got... He got his mom's ears, that's for sure. It's about as fresh as you're gonna get. 
got iodined, weighed. We'll let him get up and get a meal in him, and then uh, once he knows his way around the bases here, let's get you not like that. Once he knows his way around the bases, then we'll worry about giving him his uh, shots and paste. That's going to be one big bull calf. It'll be fun to look back and see how he looks this October. That bred heifer's calf is up and working. It's about a, almost two hours, hour and a half now since this calf was out and about. and He is big. He's got uh, all four quarters nursed on. And uh, mom's a good mom. He is pretty, pretty good size. Got a lot of leg to him. Nice looking baldy calf here. Two little black eyes. Big old, big old bull calf. 94.77 pounds. Quite the unit there coming out of a first calf heifer. I opened up the barn now, so the only thing we have in this lot is actually two sets of twins. We got 6229 and her boys here. The original set, they're both nursing good. Figuring out that bag. And then I threw out uh, 4003. And here's our little guy we we're working with. He's spunky and active and healthy and looking good. But these boys will stay in the barn with mom. I had one other cow that was due to calve in here. Um, and I kicked her out because that little 4003, he was nursing on her. And I don't even think she's going to calve within the... Uh, next three four days so she can just go out the weather's supposed to be nice here over the next three four days we dropped another two calves in the lot today um so finally things are picking back up three calves here today in about two hours which was kind of exhilarating right you kind of got excited that we're doing something again around here um otherwise i was just dragging lots today kind of killing time waiting for uh waiting for cows to calve so yeah in closing we got these twins working here now that's a good thing to see those guys up there are working with their mother. Um, they got three of the quarters figured out, nursing good. And then the uh, bred heifer that I helped pull out today. Her and her calf are doing really well up here. And they'll stay in here. I'll kick them out tomorrow morning. Um, they can go out tomorrow morning to the uh, main lot. Get a night together, kind of pair up. For having, a, uh, for having to pull him into this world and being 95 pounds for him to get up, get nursing, her being such a good mother, I'm super impressed with that. Uh, they'll be a nice pair. But yeah, with that being said, YouTube, uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, leave us comments, questions, uh, concerns, and uh, yeah, we'll try to get back to you as much as we can. That kind of concludes our first two weeks of March here now. So thanks for watching. We'll keep you posted.